In previous video we saw that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 over 2 and the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Can we use that to find the sine and the cosine of 15 degrees? Well, we can divide this angle into two parts so that this angle is 15 degrees and then this angle will be 60 degrees. But that means that this angle here is equal to 30 degrees. If we denote this point by O prime, then the sine of 30 degrees is equal to Nm over O prime M, so the sine of 30 degrees is equal to Nm over O prime M, and that is equal to A over O prime M. But since the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 over 2, that means that O prime M is equal to 2 times A. And the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to O prime N over O prime M. But O prime M is equal to 2A, so this is equal to O prime N over 2A. And since the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 2, then O prime N is equal to the square root of 3 times A. So O prime M is equal to 2A and O prime N is equal to the square root of 3 times A. Now if you look at the triangle O O prime M, since these two angles are equal, then the triangle O O prime M is an isosceles triangle, which means that O O prime is equal to O prime M. So O O prime is equal to O prime M, which is equal to 2A. The sine of 15 degrees is equal to A over C, and to find it, we'll first express C in terms of A. For that, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. So C squared is equal to A squared plus 2A plus the square root of 3 times A squared. Now C squared is equal to A squared plus 4A squared plus 2 times 2A times the square root of 3 times A plus 3A squared. And here we have A squared, 4A squared and 3A squared which is A times A squared plus 4 times the square root of 3 times a squared. Which is equal to a squared times 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3. So c is equal to the square root of a squared times 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3 which is equal to a times the square root of 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3. Now the sine of 15 degrees is equal to a over c and that is equal to a over a times the square root of 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3 and a and a cancel out, which means that this is equal to 1 over the square root of 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3. And now we'll first rationalize this denominator. 1 over the square root of 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3, 
is equal to 1 over the square root of 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 8 minus 4 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 8 minus 4 times the square root of 3. And this is equal to the square root of 8 minus 4 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 8 plus 4 times the square root of 3 times 8 minus 4 times the square root of 3, which is equal to the square root of 8 minus 4 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times the square root of 3 squared. And this is now equal to the square root of 8 minus 4 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 64 minus 16 times 3 is 48, which is equal to the square root of 8 minus 4 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 16, and that is equal to the square root of 8 minus 4 times the square root of 3 over 4. So this is equal to the square root of 8 minus 4 times the square root of 3 over 4. But this still looks cumbersome, and it turns out that this part in the numerator can be further simplified. Now, this is the part where we need to guess a little how to proceed. And we'll do the following. We'll say that this is equal to the square root of 2 times 4 minus 2 times the square root of 3. We did this because this part in parentheses can be represented as the square of a binomial. So this is equal to the square root of 2 times 3 minus 2 times the square root of 3 plus 1. And that is equal to the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 squared minus 2 times the square root of 3 times 1 plus 1 squared, which is equal to the square root of 2 times, and this is the square root of 3 minus 1 squared. which is equal to the square root of 2 times the square root of the square root of 3 minus 1 squared, and that is equal to the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 minus 1, which is equal to the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2. So the sine of 15 degrees is equal to the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over 4. And for the cosine of 15 degrees, we could use the, the sine squared of 15 degrees plus the cosine squared of 15 degrees is equal to 1, which would give us that the cosine of 15 degrees is equal to the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 over 4, but I leave it to you to verify that. We started with right triangle ONM, whose angle at the vertex O was 15 degrees. Then we divided the angle at the vertex M into two angles. One was equal to 15 degrees, and the other was equal to 60 degrees. 
That way, we got the isosceles triangle OO prime M and the right triangle O prime NM with the angle of 30 degrees at O prime. From the sine and the cosine of 30 degrees, we calculated that O prime M is equal to 2A and O prime N is equal to the square root of 3 times A. And since O O prime M is an isosceles triangle, then O O prime is also equal to 2A. After that, we use the Pythagorean theorem to express C in terms of A. From there, after simplifying the expression, we got that the sine of 15 degrees is equal to the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over 4. And finally, from the sine squared of 15 degrees plus the cosine squared of 15 degrees is equal to 1, the cosine of 15 degrees can be calculated. We were able to use this approach of finding the values of the sine and the cosine of 15 degrees because 15 degrees is equal to 1 half of 30 degrees. And we know the sine and the cosine of 30 degrees. With that in mind, I leave you with this question. What are the sine and the cosine of 22 and a half degrees? That is all for this video. If you liked it, click the like button, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you next time.